Hello, what's up, YouTube photographer Ronix with yet another retouching tutorial. And in this tutorial today, we're going to focus basically on how to get the best radius for your frequency separation. So this tutorial is basically about how to get your best radius or your frequency separation radius uh, during the Gaussian blur process or step for your frequency separation so that you can have the best details or the best and natural skin tones or skin textures for your images in photoshop as usual we're going to go through all the steps then we shall later on focus on the major emphasis for this tutorial that is how to get the best radius for your frequency separation so, so that you can uh, get back those beautiful skin textures and the natural skin text, uh, textures for your images i'm sorry if at all I do make some errors in this tutorial because I'm a little bit tired but I just thought I should share with you guys because I've been getting so many messages on my Instagram at Ronnie's Photograph about how to get the best and sharp uh, details for your images in Photoshop while you're doing frequent separation so the trick is uh, or the trick basically comes with the radius for your Gaussian blur so we are going to learn about that in this tutorial but let's start by looking at this image so we're going to go through all the steps I usually do for my skin retouching because yeah there may be a beginner out there who may be wanting to learn about color grading frequency separation using a mixer brush tool and maybe eye and teeth whitening so this tutorial is basically also going to focus on those so uh, this model here is called Mercy she's a friend of mine and I took this image a while back last year and I shot it using a Canon 60 camera I'm using an older version of camera 9.9 like I said I'll be upgrading quite soon so usually I prefer first of all color grade the image this is the first step for my color grading all my images in Photoshop so this is a raw image and so now also be showing you guys how I do take these beautiful images so I usually first come to camera calibration the camera calibration option and I first of all calibrate my image so camera calibration is basically uh, putting or making an image or bringing back the colors the way you're basically wanting them to look like or how you are looking at the image at the back of your camera screen so when you come to this camera calibration option for newer versions I think it is around right here so I first of all come and choose the picture style in which I shot the image so since this is a raw image you'll have this camera profile option so I'm going to come and click landscape because I shoot in landscape so I'm going to come to the basic panel and I'm going to turn this all the way down because our Canon cameras basically usually all always have some kind of a tint or a magenta tint in them. So I'm going to first of all come and I'm going to knock down and get rid of uh, that kind of tint from the image. So I'm going to go all the way down. So I think this looks fine. So I'm going to come to my highlights because I want to bring back the details right here. Uh, my flash power is kind of too much. So I'm going to knock down the highlights all the way to, I think, that. I think that I still have my highlights and I'm going to come to the whites. I want to gain back that and I'm going to knock down the blacks slightly. Then I, well, we shall pump up the blacks and we are going to gain back uh, these uh, details in the black area so I think that is fine so let's put a little bit of clarity I feel this image is kind of too oversaturated so I'm going to come to the vibrance and I'm going to uh, turn it down slightly I think that looks fine to me negative 6 looks fine to me and I'm going to pump up a little bit of contrast to around 3 I think this is fine so let's open up our image into Photoshop so let's click open image and the image is going to be open so you're going to be learning about frequency separation and it's going to be slightly 
an in-depth tutorial so we are going to first of all crop the image for instagram that is in a ratio of four to five so drop down here and uh, look for four to five or eight by ten so you're going to crop this image in that ratio so i want to get rid of these uh, distractions because uh, they seem too much for my liking i'm just going to rotate that slightly i think this looks fine to me i'm going to click enter on the keyboard uh, to crop uh, the image so you're going to be working with this image you can see uh, it is uh, really a sharp image so uh, we're going to start uh, learning about frequency separation so basically frequency separation is a, a skin retouching technique that advises the image into two uh, that uh, it gives us an opportunity or a chance to work on the image separately so we get the details or textures we put them on a particular layer and we also get uh, the skin tones and we put them on a different layer so when you combine the two layers you'll be able to get back this image so let me get into uh, the details or in a bit of what i'm trying to explain right there so you're going to first of all duplicate the background uh, the background layer twice by clicking ctrl or command j twice uh, to make those two layers so we're going to name the top layer since the textures on our skins are usually on top or protruding or exposed we are going to name the upper layer texture or some people call it the high frequency layer and you're going to name this lower layer you're going to name it uh, tones or some people call it a uh, low frequency so you shouldn't uh, get confused if at all you come across these two terminologies so now wh what we are going to be doing we want to turn off this uh, texture layer and select the tones layer so we are going to first of all uh, remove textures from uh, the models first what can remain with the skin tones like it suggests right here on the name so we are going to come to filter then we are going to come to blur and we are going to come to Gaussian blur so this is where you have to really pay a close attention because this is more of the emphasis or the major emphasis of this basic tutorial we are doing right now so this tutorial is about how to get the best radius for your frequency separation so that you can have the best and best skin textures and the best natural skin textures for your images so i know some people out there use frequency separation and they kind of get plastic images and the textures are really not natural enough so this tutorial is for you guys out there so this is the step so when you click on Gaussian Blight is going to open this box right here so we're going to start moving this yeah we're going to start moving uh, this slider until uh, we get rid of so you have to look for the area that uh, has more skin textures than the rest of uh, the model's skin so you're going to move this until we completely lose out on these textures remember when we start uh, doing African separation or the retouching process using a Mesa brush tool and uh, the lasso tool method, you're going to regain back the textures we lost right here. So that is what you're going to be doing. So you're going to start moving this slider. Uh, you have to move it while looking at this box right here and make sure your preview is on and looking at the, the image. So we are going to uh, move it. You see we can still notice this texture so you're going to move it until so it has to be a gradual step or method until you completely uh, lose out on the texture so you can see we have lost out on those textures but we only have the colors or the skin tones for the model so i think this looks fine to me so if at all i click right there you can see we can no longer see the textures and we only have colors for this very image so we are going to click ok right there so what we are going to do right now we are going to uh, come and click on the texture layer so we want to regain back the textures we blurred out of the tones layer so we want to subtract those textures from the tones layer right here so uh, select your texture layer or high frequency layer and click on the eye icon to 
activate it so we are going to come right to image and we are going to come to apply image so when you click on apply image you get this little box so remember we want to subtract uh, the textures from the tones layer so we're going to select that tones layer not the texture layer but at this time around the tones layer and remember we want to subtract the textures from that tones layer so we're going to come right down here and you're going to click subtract so i know you may not get your image uh, right away looking like this because you have to put in the opacity at 100 and make sure your preview is checked uh, the scale is 2 and the offset 128 so the reason for having an offset of 128 is because i want to get a 50 percent gray so that uh, that gray layer is going to be containing the textures for as uh, the image so so the reason for this is uh we divide 256 that is the rgb uh, by 2 we, we put this value 128 and the scale is 2 because uh, we divided uh 256 by 2 so we're going to come and click ok come under the blending mode and we change it right to linear light and when you do that you get back the image the way it was initially before so we want to see if at all we successfully did our frequency separation for this image remember there shouldn't be a difference between the original background layer and uh, the frequency separation uh, layers so we want to put this two in a group by holding down you can hold down command and click on both layers or you can hold down a uh, control and click on both layers so click command g or control g on the keyboard to put them in a group so we are going to uh, rename this uh, frequency separation for purposes of being uniform so let's turn this on and off to see if at all there is a difference between the original background image and our frequency separation group so this is the uh you can see when we toggle this on and off there is no difference at all so meaning we have successfully done the frequency separation so here is the other thing we are going to get into in a bit so we are going to open the group and when you click on your texture layer remember when every layer you click and you want to create a new layer the new layer is going to create uh it's going to be created right on top of the texture layer so you're going to come under adjustments and create a black and white layer on top of the texture layer so the reason for creating this is because we want uh, to see all those areas that have uh, harsh transitions between the skin tones so you're going to move the red slider slightly down until we see uh, the skin tones and those imbalances in the skin tones so i think that is fine so we're going to select the tones layer and now we're going to blend the unevenness in the skin tones using a mixer brush tool so right click uh, under the brushes you may get your mixer brush tool right under the brushes or you can just simply right click there and uh, look for your mixer brush tool so mine is just right there so here is where you set up your mixer brush tool first of all make sure it is a clean brush and make sure this box right here is checked and the reason for that i've always mentioned it in my tutorials is because we want photoshop automatically clean the brush after each and every uh, stroke so that uh we cannot carry a tones from a particular area to another so the brush is going to be automatically cleaned by photoshop so make sure wetness is uh we are going to be using a wetness this uh, this time around of around uh let's use a wetness of six percent i don't know i'm not getting that so i'll just type it in so we're going to be using six percent uh load 75 mix 90 and the flow 100 so make sure sample all layers is not marked or selected because we only want to mix the skin tones on the tones layer so we don't want it to sample from the texture layer so make sure this right here is not marked or checked so we're going to uh, zoom in slightly onto the model's face and we're just going to blend those areas that uh, have kind of bumps in the skin tone so just come and paint and just blend so in order to 
play around with the size of your brush or decrease or increase it use the left and the right brackets on the keyboard uh, to do that so don't over mix a particular area for too long because uh, you're going to be distorting uh, the natural skin textures and you're going to be losing out on the naturalness and you'll end up with a plastic image so just do it slightly don't over mix for too long so let's say before and after so far so as the before after before after you can see uh, it is really a subtle difference but uh, it is worth it so just do this and after i'll be sharing with you guys the best way to bring back most it, uh, most of the texture so you are going to uh, reduce and uh, mix on this nose area on the shadow area of the nose like that then come right here and just continue uh, mixing so remember if at all i forgot to tell you when you mix you make sure you mix the midtones alone the highlights alone and the shadows alone don't drag from the midtones to the highlights uh, make sure you remain with the, uh, within those boundaries and when you come when, uh, to an area where it is transi uh, transitioning sorry i just mix that area like that to give it a more blending kind of feel so we're just going to continue uh, mixing uh, those areas or blending them together to to just harmonize uh, the skin the skin tones of those particular areas so let's do this and we shall be back with uh, the lasso tool method to further give us more and more beautiful results so just blend those areas you feel have harsh transitions uh, within uh, the skin tones basically so i think that's fine so let's see the before and after let's first of all mix right here and it's just mix so i think that's fine so let's say before and after so far so that's the image before after before after we have really done a pretty nice job so let's uh, uh continue blending uh, this other area of uh, the model so let's turn this on and continue blending i know most people don't uh, want to retouch the body parts or the parts that don't contain the face but remember we are doing skin retouching and yeah the whole body has the skin so you shouldn't uh, miss out on uh, blending those areas too and you shouldn't a bit uh, be in a rush as a retoucher because at the end of the day you want the most perfect results so that's why for my tutorials i tend not to uh, miss out on any a step because i want everyone even a beginner to follow along and learn something at least i know uh, my tutorials are really long but i know they are worth it at the end of the day so let's uh blend uh these areas i think you can as well work without the black and white layer to clearly see where to blend like that so i think that uh, this looks really fine so we are going to delete the black and white layer and here i know most people really love uh, using the lasso tool method so we are going to be using the lasso tool method to cut uh, to further fine tune the image so we are going to select the lasso tool that's the lasso tool make sure i feathering is 23 pixels and alias is marked or select selected so we are going to zoom into this uh zoom in the image so we are going to make a selection so make this selection on the skin area and you can uh, res you should actually you must uh, resist from selecting the eyebrows or all the borders or the hair or maybe a cloth if at all the cloth is uh, close to a face so after you have made that beautiful selection on the skin area come right to filter and come to blur come to gaussian blur so we are going to move this slider remember we used the radius of 10 when we are applying uh the frequency separation uh blur or the gaussian blur to remain with the skin tone so we are going to move this slider until we see the perfect skin texture for the model so let's uh move this so you should uh take your time 
while doing this step because it's going to determine the overall skin texture for your image so i think we are going to go with a radius of around 33 i think this texture looks fine to me yeah even at a distance we still have uh, the skin texture are uh, visible so we are going to click ok or oh, the other trick i can share with you guys is i remember we had the radius of 10 so when you multiply the radius we use for african separation blurring to, to uh, retain the tones uh multiply that by three and add three to that value so if at all you use the radius of 10 multiply 10 by three and you'll get 30 then add three to that value and when you just type in 33 you'll get uh, the perfect skin textures for your image so let's zoom in slightly and make selections and apply it remember when we are using a mixer brush tool we may have missed out on some areas so that's why we have to use uh, the lasso tool method to bring back or further fine-tune the image to uh, uh, get the natural uh, skin textures so let's do this in a bit and we shall come back uh, to maybe a blemish removal and uh, maybe color grading and we shall do a little bit of eye whitening onto the model so i hope you stay tuned and you're still tuned watching this tutorial and learning something at least so let's uh you can see my selections i'm not selecting uh an area with uh, a solid selection i'm just making shapes so you should also make those shapes so i know most people when it comes to this nose area it is the most tricky bit of it so most people come and right click and click on the gaussian blur so you can see you lost out on the highlights so what uh, i would advise is you have to reduce on the blur radius on that area so come and click shift ctrl f on the keyboard and turn down the opacity of that effect if at all you wanted to apply it on that area so i'll go with 10 because i want to retain uh, that detail or the beautiful nose highlight on the model's face so let's see the before and after so far you can see what we have just done with uh, just a few steps so you're going to come and uh, select the texture layer get the clone stamp tool uh, and now we have to over zoom into the image and uh, sample from a clean area and paint over the blemishes so alternate click on a clean area close the blemish and paint over it to uh, get rid of it so alternate click on a clean area and paint so hold down the alternate click on a clean area and paint over uh, the blemish you want to uh, get rid of i hope this is not getting to be a uh, longer tutorial than the usual ones but i just feel like there is someone uh, learning from this because i always get uh, messages in my instagram dm about emphasizing uh, particular points for uh, skin retouching that's why i have really tried to break down skin retouching into uh, color grading and eye whitening mixer brush settings so that uh, you can learn if at all you're failing to understand a particular area for uh, your overall skin retouching so i just prefer to uh, do that so you can always support this channel and you can advise me i think i'm planning to uh, create my lads for color grading so you can uh, advise me on uh, the pricing yeah it will be like a way of supporting the channel so i know they may be pricey but uh for all you have learned at no cost on this channel i think it will be like a way of uh giving back to uh, the channel and appreciating uh the channel as well so i'm going to zoom out and i'm going to look for those areas i can visibly see the blemishes at the distance so you have to keep on uh, zooming in and out while you're doing uh, your blemish removal so let's uh, do this quick so that we can get into yet another episode of uh, maybe color grading or doing something uh, more 
useful uh, to the overall retouching process so let me do this quick i think in less than a minute we shall we shall be done with uh the blemish removal and remember blemish removal really contributes over 60 percent to your overall skin retouching process so let's do this quick i'm sorry i really take uh, my time while uh, removing these blemishes because i want you guys to see the transformation step by step i don't want to act like i've done some magic when you guys are not watching so i just want to take things uh, slow i remember someone complained about me taking uh making long videos and it was just kind of an insult to me but we had played cool so let's i think we are done with the blemish removal so you can just take your time while removing uh the blemish uh the blemishes from your images i think that's all for the blemish removal so i said before after before after so what we're going to do we're not going to be doing uh skin sculpting for this tutorial we're just going to go straight into the color grading of this image so we're going to create a stamp visible by clicking shift alternate ctrl e on the keyboard and you're going to get this spot healing tool and you're going to uh, zoom into the image and just slightly clean it up and remove this pin i think that's also let's uh, do the color grading further so i'm going to come under right here and click on selective color and uh, look for blacks and you're going to just intensify the black channel like that to regain back the darks or the blacks and after we're going to uh, turn the yellows towards the left hand side to add that kind of bluish feel to uh, the image i think that's fine so we're going to come to the contrast and you're going to activate or check use legacy and pump it up slightly i think that's fine and now we're going to come to the hue uh vibrance sorry and you're going to turn it up uh, down a little bit more and the saturation you're going to turn it down too i think that looks fine for this image so after we have done so what you're going to do we are going to uh, whiten the eyes and teeth for this model so we are going to create another stamp visible layer by clicking shift alternate ctrl e on the keyboard and create that and you're going to duplicate that by clicking ctrl or command j on the keyboard then come to filter and come to camera raw filter so here we are going to be using the adjustment brush to do the eye whitening for this model so zoom into the eyes to be precise and get that adjustment brush make sure the temperature is around negative you're going to go with around negative 26 tint is 72 uh, highlights and whites at 6 and saturation negative 74 because we want to remove the color from the eyes the white area and you're just going to paint over uh, that white area of the eye to uh, just whiten it up a little bit i think that is fine and looks natural so just paint over only and only the white area of the eye so come and uh, you can zoom into maybe the teeth and uh, do a little bit of teeth whitening so you can select that again and zoom in and just do your teeth whitening so let's do that quick because i feel like uh i've talked like for over an hour i hope we are not in an hour's time so let's uh do that so basically we are just uh enhancing or adding more beauty to the image so we're just doing some teeth whitening for this model so i think uh, that's fine 
So I think that looks fine. So let's zoom out and I think this is really fine. So let's uh, click OK. And now the reason for creating this backup layer is because we want but we have overdone the teeth whitening we can just come and uh, draw it down a little bit to around 50 percent uh, to give it a more natural kind of feel so i think that is fine for me and now we can uh, come to selective color and do more color grading come to the red channel and you can just pump up uh, the yellow slightly to around three and you can come under the magenta and you can uh, knock it down slightly and we are going to come to the yellows and you're going to uh, knock them down like that a little bit more i think that's fine for me and you're just going to be done with our overall retouching so basically this has been a tutorial about the best radius for your Gaussian blur and frequency separation. If at all you learned something from this tutorial, don't forget to hit the like button on this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If at all you have landed on this video for the very first time from this channel, I'm Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in yet another tutorial on this channel and don't forget to keep creating.